Hello YouTube, welcome back to Happy Hour. Today we've got the Bunnehaven 12 year old. So, hey everybody, welcome back to Happy Hour. Hope you're having a great day, week, month. It's 2022, feels a lot like 2021 right now, but hey, what are you gonna do? Drink whiskey, I guess. <laughs> So yeah, like I said in the intro, today we have, uh, it's a very, very special whiskey. I'm gonna be completely upfront with you like I normally am in most of my videos and give it away. Uh, this is a banger, this is a cracker. This is all the uh, silly acronyms you wanna use for an amazing whiskey in my opinion. So yeah, we've got Bonahaven 12 year old. Bonahaven is not a new brand for me. Uh, it's, it was kind of in the, really one of the first, I don't know, 10, 15 whiskeys when I really started to get into single malts that I purchased. This was quite a few years ago, like seven, eight, nine, ten years ago, somewhere in that range. Um, and I remember really liking it, but I don't know if the whiskey got better or if my tastes have changed. Well, my tastes definitely have, I don't want to say improved, but have maybe, uh, ah, I've, I've, I've tasted a lot more whiskey obviously since then. So maybe my palate has kind of grown a little bit or yeah, we'll go with that. Um, but I have a feeling maybe the whiskey's gotten better too, because I have, I, I bought this, let me just start with this actually. I bought this bottle about a month ago, because I was like, you know what? I haven't had a bottle of Bonahaven in, in a long time. And I've only ever had the 12 year old. There aren't that many core expressions, I believe. I know there's the 18, which I'd love to get my hands on, but that's like a unicorn. I have seen online, there's quite a few, uh, you know, travel, you know, travel market bottles, some peated, some not, some wine casts, a bunch of different stuff. But I don't know that their core range has a whole lot of, lot of options, or at least where I see Bonahaven, this is the only one I basically ever see. Um, so yeah, I figured, I remember liking it. I'm like, you don't want to get another bottle of this. And man, am I pleasantly surprised. It is considerably better than I remembered it. And for whatever the reason is, whether the whiskey's better and or my palate is better or can appreciate it more, I don't care, all I know is I love it. So yeah, Bonahaven, Bonahaven 12 year old. It is, uh, it's an Isla whiskey, but it's not kind of your your average, well, I don't say average Isla whiskey. It doesn't, doesn't have the characteristics of the profile of what you would maybe most consider Isla whiskeys being heavily peated. This is an unpeated, unpeated Isla whiskey. Uh, again, I've seen, I think there's a couple of whiskeys I've seen for, for the travel market where they've done some peated expressions, but I believe their main core range are unpeated. Sherry butts, bourbon butts, uh, not a, I haven't done a whole lot of research. There's nothing really on the bottle saying whether it's, you know, sherry, bourbon, or what kind of combination. I believe it's quite sherry because I can taste it. But it is, uh, yeah, it's an unpeated Isla whiskey. It is absolutely fantastic. In fact, I think I'm going to have to compare it to Glendronic. And I say that because I, lately, the Glendronic 12-year-old, you've probably seen it in a few of my videos. If you've seen some of my videos, I've compared it. I kind of use that as my... Be kind of using that as my almost my, my measuring stick for my 12 year old sherried whiskeys. Uh, it kind of, I, I, I enjoy it very much. It's kind of just hits everything that I generally look for in a, in a 12 year old sherried whiskey. And I kind of use it as my measuring stick when I, when I, when I try a new sherried whiskey or reintroduce myself to a sherried whiskey to see how it compares back to back. And I'll be honest with you, without having to do that, without having done that yet, this might be taking over for my yard, my 12 year old kind of sherried yardstick, but we'll see. I don't want to get ahead of myself. So yeah, non-peated Isla whiskey, um, 12 years old. Now here are the best parts. Talk about integrity bottling, 46.3% uh, ABV, check. Natural color, check. Unchill filtered, check. And best of all, 49.99 by me. 50 bucks for me, again, what I'm putting this up against is the Glendronic 12s and maybe, uh, maybe, maybe Glenallochy 12 or the Glen Goines, some of those, the heavier share, maybe, you know, maybe, a, maybe a Glen Farkless. Um, so $49.99 for 46.3%, non-chill filtered, no color added. What's not the like? Before I even taste it, that, that, that's awesome, right? All right, so let's get into it. I've, I poured this uh, a few minutes ago. Just let it open up a little bit and breathe. I haven't tasted it yet, but let's dive in on the nose. Oh, it's so good. So, 
I get Sherry, obviously. Now, what I really enjoy about this, one of the things I really enjoy about this, especially on the nose right now, is that I can tell it's an Isla whiskey, or at least a coastal whiskey. It has, if you've seen my, my review of Old Pulteney, Old Pulteney 12 year old, one of the things that really drew me to that originally was, it was one of the first whiskeys that when I dove in and, and took a sniff, I didn't just smell a kind of a whiskey, I smelled something else, one of those, you know, people, we, we all talk about these different notes, whether they be fruits or, or, you know, hay or wood or mud or coastal, coastal notes in this case. I could smell sea air. I could actually smell like salt water. And I get that with this Bonnehaven. So that obviously is kind of a, it's a bit of a weakness of mine. Again, I love that old Pultney. I love that coastal note. So now we've got this incredible sherried whiskey with that coastal note combined. Yeah, it's kind of pulling out my heartstrings a little bit. So past that kind of salinity and that brininess, I get a beautiful kind of funky sherry. I, I love that. It's not overly funky, um, but I get a little bit of that deep, rich, rich sherry notes. Um, I do get a little bit of the brighter notes as well. I get a bit of the, the apple, but it's more of kind of a red apple, not quite a bright, fresh, crisp green apple. It's a little bit more rounded, a little sweeter. Um, I do actually get a little bit of leather now. I wasn't really picking that out last the last time I had it, but yeah, I get this kind of a leathery and like black, little bit of a black pepper note. It smells fantastic. Yeah, again, so the fact that I really love that briny saltiness that I get from from the old Pulteney's, among others, but old Pulteney is the one that jumps to mind when I when I think of that that note. And we've combined it with with the with the a lot of the features I get from the Glendronic, but a little bit of a deeper, a little deeper sherry notes, kind of closer. I don't want to say Edredauer ten, but working its way towards that darker, funkier uh, sherry stuff. Oh, it smells fantastic! It's really unique. All right, let's have a taste. Oh God, it's delicious. On the taste, it actually reminds me of Glendronic. So the first notes that hit me, I do get a little bit of that salinity, a little bit of that saltiness, but I get all those fruits, all that fruit salad that I talk about with the Glendronic 12, that's what hits my tongue first. So it's a little bit of like a pepper, a white pepper maybe, and then that fruit salad, and then the back of my palate, I get the that kind of coating, darker, a little bit of earthy notes, leathery notes. Uh, wow. Yeah. So I've been I've been kind of saving my my saving my palate. I've been saving. I haven't had any of this in in several weeks. Like I said, I bought it. I can't remember how long ago I bought it. It was maybe a month ago, let's say. And I drank quite a bit of it the first couple of nights. I was like, wow, this is amazing. Holy crap! And then I kind of wanted it to sit for a few weeks before I did the review and kind of maybe let it open up a little bit. And it is not disappointing. Oh, it's almost perfect. That sounds crazy. Maybe, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. But when I think of like, what's a perfect whiskey, and obviously it's going to be different for everybody and probably even different for everybody, depending on the time or the, maybe the occasion or the, you know, whether it's a special occasion or where you are or who you're with drinking. So perfect is, a, is an odd statement because I don't think it's singular. But when I taste this, I think of, well, what more would I want? Like what else, what else would I want to add to this to make it better? And I really can't think of anything off the top of my head. The only thing that makes me th that I could think of was I wonder what this tastes like at 18 years, where you get the kind of the deeper and the, maybe a little the, the nuttier notes and it rounds out the edges even a little bit more. So the only thing that comes to mind when I think of what would I like to make this better would be I'm so curious to try what the 18 year tastes like because this is fantastic. All right, I'm going to grab the Glendronic and I want to do a little side by side because I haven't done it yet and I'm kind of excited to. All right. Let's put a little drop of the Glendronic. Excuse me. 
All right, let's get these guys out of the way. So color-wise, man, they're looking in the light. They're almost identical. Hmm, okay. Yeah, see, this is amazing. I'm smelling things now that I haven't normally smelt in Glendronic. And again, it's because you have these contrasts. Uh, it's really the only way to drink whiskey. Plus, you can get two. What's not to like about that? Yeah, so I'm getting I'm getting a lot of those stewed brighter fruits. Again, I use that canned fruit salad analogy um, with, you know, like the pear and the pear and apple and the little green grapes in there and that just that luscious juice, that syrup that's in there. That's what I get. Right now it's kind of amped up to, it's amped up a, a couple extra notches. You know what though? I get that on the Bonahaven, just not quite as intense. I get, honestly, I get the exact same nose. All those fruit, fruity notes are notched down, maybe one notch on the Bonahaven, but then like resting on a bed of, of caramel and saltiness and maybe like get a little bit of that hint of leather, you know, like saddle leather, or you get a new pair of awesome boots. There's that kind of, uh, that just, that kind of musty leathery smell. It's not overpowering, but it just, it creates this little bed. I, I kind of picture it as a bed. <laughs> Sounds crazy, but we're using our imagination here, right? Oh, it's, oh, I almost swore there. It's friggin' amazing. Yeah, they're, they're deaf, they're different. But they're in the, they're working in the same ballpark. I'll be completely honest with you. I give the nose to the Bonahaven. Um, only because there's a little more going on here. Not that Glendronic is, is bad by any stretch. You know, I love it. Um, but it's, this has everything that Glendronic has toned down a notch or two, but then a little bit more around the edges, a little more, again, of that kind of darker caramelly, uh, the salinity, a little bit of leather. It's just a little more rounded. It's got a little bit more everything. All right, let's taste them. I'm going to taste the Glendronic. It's not the like. I love that. Mm. I prefer the Bonahaven. Like I said, it's got everything the Glendronic seems to have, but even a bit more. It's a little more well-rounded. There's some more flavors. There's some, there's some more nuance going on there. Um, yeah, we got ourselves a winner, folks. All I can say is these are both fantastic whiskeys. But I think I have a new... I don't know if, I'm, if I would say I have a new yardstick when it comes to 12-year-old sherry whiskeys. I think I could use both of these as kind of examples or measuring sticks against other whiskeys right now. Um, really, in kind of... in my, in, I would break that down in my mind in kind of two ways. If I had a sherry whiskey that was brighter and fruitier... Um, I would probably kind of lean towards the Glendronic to, to, to see the differences a little bit. If I had maybe more darker, funkier, sherried whiskeys, uh, I think the Bonahaven would be a great yardstick to go against. But yeah, this is fantastic. I'm so glad I've reacquainted myself with it. It is going to be on my shelf forever and ever. Amen. $49.99, unchill filtered, 46.3, no color added. Very, very unique delicious go buy yourself a bottle so if you like the video folks give me a thumbs up that'd be cool and uh, if you'd like to subscribe that'd be awesome too i'd appreciate it cheers enjoy your whiskeys be safe see you next time